Hi everybody and welcome to today's session, Decades in the Making, how we ended up with data chaos and how to fix it. CRM systems have been a key tool for organisations for more than two decades now and it has been quite the journey. There are common themes plaguing CRM and Salesforce data quality throughout the ages that even today we can learn from. Moreover, there are absolutely key characteristics of those organizations today that are excelling with their data quality and putting what is their greatest asset first. Before we start our journey, um, my name's Elliot Hogg um, and I manage sales enablement for Validity in International. Um, I have a background um, in marketing and data quality optimization, working with some of the largest brands um, across both Europe and um, the world. And I'll be taking you through today's session. Let's start our journey and we will begin with the dark ages, before CRM, before Salesforce was even a mainstream topic. What occurred during this age? Well, manual customer data management was at the core of it, right? There were no CRM systems. People were essentially managing in that pre-CRM world, customer data in private and personal spreadsheets and notebooks being used to store customer data and information. This did eventually give way to, to database marketing in the early 90s. And database marketing was focused around taking your database of consumers and targeting your audience. And moreover, the members of that audience that are more likely to react in a positive way to your message. There was a missing piece though. Going after a database marketing approach needed more than this pre-CRM personal and private storage of information on Excel, on your notebook, on your desk. And that was the centralized storage of a company's customer data um, in the pursuit of that more effective consumer communication and as a result, improved relationships with customers and the market as a whole. And that's where CRM was born, customer relationship management. It, at the time, was a pretty revolutionary concept, right? And it was obviously a huge success, not least for those first movers in the industry um, that helped others make that shift, like the sales forces of the world, right? Salesforce founded in the early 90s and went on to acquire over 5,000 customers in just over a year since they began business. Incredible numbers and shows really how this trend took its pace. However, there were issues right from day one. And one of those, as we, are, we may all be aware, is data quality and the management of data within a Salesforce org. It really was at the forefront from day one. What were previously very disparate, separated, siloed data sources, remember Excel saved on your desktop, notebooks on your desk, Previously, very different, very different data sources not stored in a centralized location. Now they're suddenly all put into one Salesforce or CRM org. That led to huge duplication issues from day one with centralized systems. It was critical for companies in this age to be, in order to be successful, that they focus on adoption of these new processes within Salesforce, something that's a huge struggle for even companies and um, Salesforce and CRM admins today. That's adoption by the business, but also those end users, right? Alongside making sure effective systems were in place for the consolidation and management of those pre-existing data sources. For those that did not embrace those two aspects, data chaos ensued. And at this point, moving through to chapter two, the enlightenment, CRM has been born and it was growing, whilst also simultaneously becoming more and more accessible to companies of all shapes and sizes all around the globe. Put simply, word was spreading. The Enlightenment saw, saw two concepts very much at the heart of today. Growth had occurred at a pace where if we go and stick with that Salesforce example, they had now grown to over 15,000 customers within the first six years. Extraordinary growth that is a sign of how successful CRM as a concept was and the impact it was having for companies who implemented it. However, that is over 15,000 different implementations of Salesforce. It could be any CRM system, 
all with differing data needs. And we start to see common issues become very apparent, right? If we take implementation and adoption, a typical adoption curve, they're all two-sided. And companies began to realize pretty early on that CRM and its novelty did wear off quite quickly. Data decays very, very quickly, particularly in a B2B world. And quickly, companies descended into data chaos off the back of the early successes of the CRM implementation, as opposed to that single source of truth that is des de desired by everybody. And something had to be done. And there was a second aspect to the enlightenment phase that is a great sign of this. And that is that the CRM system alone was not enough. And I think everyone realized that, right? We saw this huge ecosystem grow around it as we have today with all of the money that Salesforce are adding into the economy and all of the jobs related to Salesforce as a technology. There is a huge ecosystem. We saw things like the App Exchange born alongside CRM within businesses expanding into other areas, into marketing, to service, to support, all different areas of a business interacting with this one system and CRM system. It became critical across businesses, broader data quality issues as a result grew in their appearance and frankly their impact as well. The more teams using Salesforce, the more data flowing into it, the more issues it's going to have. Standardization, mass modification of data, converting of leads, and also importing and exporting, all different areas of data quality that can impact your support teams, legal teams, marketing teams, and beyond that are now using that singular CRM system. Those in the market began to recognize that solutions were required to manage and optimize data quality, therefore providing the means for businesses to be more effective, both communicating externally to customers, but also making better decisions internally. Many businesses base their reporting off of Salesforce, off of their CRM system. The poorer the quality of data within those reports, I think we all know the outcome, the poorer the quality of the decisions. And it was time to make sense of the chaos. So we then moved through to a point really where CRM systems in most organizations had begin to outgrow themselves. And there was need for a revolution, a coup to the chaos, if you will. So we saw this phase of the industrial revolution where data management was now quite simply bound to the sheer scale of CRM systems and their implementations within companies. It's cross-functional and business critical. Data never stands still, as I've mentioned a few times already, and neither can the management of its quality. Decisions made by a business have a direct relationship to this. Is it a decision that's correct for today or simply when that data, when that opportunity was updated a week ago, a month ago? if we took sales and sales forecasting as, as a use case there. And this is made even tougher at this point by the fact CRM systems were simply taking data in from so many different locations, right? Whether that's from your internal end users and sales and marketing teams entering information to people signing up for webinars, people attending your stand at a trade show, so many different types of information, so many different formats of information flowing into this single standardized view that's supposed to be the single source of truth. Efficiency is very much a hallmark of the industrial revolution, right? Automation and process, taking over people time and manual tasks. However, companies continue to really neglect what is their most valuable asset, their customer data. In fact, Validity recently did some research into the market and found that 63% of companies are still manually identifying and correcting data quality issues. There are clearly barriers in place here, right, that are halting companies in their pursuit of effective data quality management. Thus, the chaos continues and it continues all the way up to the modern age. Today, there are a few very common themes hinted at already that are pivotal to organizations that are at the top of their game. In a study conducted by Validity on the state of CRM data management, 8% of 
of participants, or as they were later named, the Elite Eight. They all shared a higher satisfaction in their lead to customer conversion rates, higher confidence in their data overall, and also more accurate sales forecasts than the rest. Why? Well, at the heart of it are three concepts which are crucial to success today. They all aim to make sense of consumer data, lifting the chaos and finding that single source of truth. The first of which is leadership prioritization. If leadership doesn't stay on top of data quality, neither will anyone else. Since leadership simply relies on the reporting so much, it should be an easy sell in theory, of course. But data has to be cleaned if leadership want the reports to steer them in the correct and best strategic direction. And this simply cannot be done without, without the right tools in place. Very, very important, cross-functional data operations. Every business should have a data operations team that nurtures, maintains this incredibly important asset to a company. Working cross-functionally with all elements of the business, that was mentioned, everyone touches the CRM system in the modern age. Just as HR manages, nurtures and maintains employees, it's the same concept. And lastly, we do have ongoing data governance. When managing and nurturing data, it is important to set the rules. How do we use the data? Where do we capture it? How long are we going to keep it, particularly in the modern age? This has to be a crucial part to data quality and the management of data within your CRM systems. When it comes to data, simply you get out of it what you put into it. And this is why demand tools from Validity exists. It is the secure data management platform that ensures your data remains your most valuable asset. Working with Salesforce and Dynamics 365 solutions today, we do this in three major ways. Firstly, we help you manage your data in minutes, not months. Deduplicating, standardizing and managing your CRM data is so time consuming. And as a result, it simply takes a backseat to other priorities. Demand Tools makes prioritizing your data quality a benefit instead of a burden on your time by allowing you to manage it in a fraction of the time. Secondly, towards the middle of the screen there, we help you get report ready data that is accurate and can be trusted within your organization. Data ent enters Salesforce and, and Dynamics from a bunch of different sources, all with their own formats and duplicates to your existing data. We automate the cleanup of your data as you're capturing it so you can generate trustworthy reports and achieve goals faster. And lastly, on that cross-functional piece, we help you market, sell, and support more effectively. Poor data quality adds friction to the customer journey. Demand Tools gives you better data hygiene to protect your customer experience and decrease sales, marketing, and operational costs. With that, we're going to jump into Demand Tools and give you a little showcase of exactly how the brand new Demand Tools V release can help you achieve those goals in action. And here we are now in Demand Tools, your complete suite for the management of your data quality. We're right now, we're in the uh, essentially the start screen and homepage for the Demand Tool solution where you can access the variety of scenarios and functionality available to you within the solution. Just to give you a quick lay of the land, in the top left, we have all of the different modules. I won't go through all of them now, the names are relatively self-explanatory, but some of the key use cases here, we have Dedupe, one of the most common use cases of our Demand Tool solution, deduplication of records within a single object. We have further functionality like modify right beneath it to modify large sets, hundreds of thousands of records at any one time, the standardization of your data. And there are also other great modules in here as well to verify email address and contact data, reassign ownership when someone leaves your company or a territory reassignment occurs, importing, exporting of data as well, ensuring there are no duplicates on the way. Down towards the bottom, uh, taking up the majority of the, of the screen, we do then have all of our different scenarios across these modules saved at the bottom. They are available across the users within your Salesforce org. Demand Tools is a secure solution and it is based as an on-prem solution 
for that reason. Where we're going to start, however, is knowing where to start. From the top right, we can see here it says assess, view full data assessment in your validity account. Assess is a brand new module in the demand tool solution, allowing users to really pinpoint where they need to start. If we click into assess, this is going to provide us some great information across the lead contact opportunity and account object as to where we're vulnerable, where our data quality is lacking, and how demand tools can help us. In order to run your assessment, on the left hand side, we have the first step for field mapping, just to take care of any custom fields you are using. Uh, this will auto map for you or you can manually um, go through it across each of the objects available. Mapping first name to first name, last name to last name, so on and so forth. There is a second step on the top right. We do check for duplicate records as, a, um, as part of the assessment, a key part of deciding your data quality. And then in the bottom right, you can verify email addresses using Validity's Bright Verify solution. So you can get a feel for the validity of your contact data. What you can then do is run your assessment from the bottom left and then jump into your My Validity account to get your results. We're now in a My Validity account here and you can see straight away the results we are getting. In the middle, we have access your record quality. This is my org here, Validity Solutions and Engineering. You can see we have a few of them. And then beneath that, we have all of the different assessments that have been run. Here, we're looking at our assessment in June 2021, so a few months ago now. In the top right, we then have the different objects that the assessment has been run upon. Here, we're just aggregating that all across. Now we get into the meat of it. We have our record quality. Record qualities are scored from unactionable records on the far left here, all the way through to the most complete records, what we call validified records and different statuses around the actionability of a record within. We do then have the breakout beneath that record quality for the different areas of vulnerability. Perhaps you have a significant number of duplicates within your org. Is it accounts? Is it your contacts? Maybe opportunities? or leads, so you can really start to see where your data quality is potentially falling off. Any malformed data and missing engagement points as well, we are missing crucial data that would allow you to contact your customers and further details around decisioning support where data is missing from crucial fields across these objects. You can also get a feel for your data quality for your email addresses towards the bottom. What you can then do is click on your how to fix button here and it's going to give you great instructions. We saw duplicates being a significant issue for us. Here we're getting some re recommended remediation steps for duplicate data, including, including links out to the brand new Demand Tools Help Center and community where there's some great training videos to help you familiarize yourself with the dedupe module. Across the top, we can then see we also have some recommendations for missing and malformed data and also invalid emails as well. So a great way to know, A, where you need to start if you're brand new to demand tools. But if you're not, what a great way to track your process and get a progress rather and get executive buy-in on the way. Show the progress that you're making within your data quality. So let's go and have a look at how we can actually fix some of these issues. Jumping back into the demand tool solution, we're gonna go back to the start screen here and we're gonna start with dedupe. Dedupe being one of the most common use cases, everybody has duplicates in their org, a really crucial place to start. I mentioned earlier the scenarios at the bottom, we have a few saves, we can filter by module here, we're gonna filter by uh, dedupe. And we can then search. There are a number of scenarios that will come out of the box for you within Demand Tools. However, you can go through and create your own. So we're going to go through and look at my city dedupe scenario. Pretty much everything in Demand Tools follows a three step process. Step one being you choose the records that you want to, um, the subset of records within the object you want to actually be analyzing here and taking action on. Step two is you choose how you want to identify that action. So whether that's identifying duplicates, whether that's what changes you want to make to standardize your data. And then there's a third and final step where you preview results. 
Here we're in step one, selecting the records. Top left, our CRM object that we want to use um, is account. Worth noting, both custom and standard objects are supported here. And in this case, we have set a condition up. If I just pop on the pencil here, billing city equals London. So we're just looking at a small subset of accounts here for those with billing city of London. And then on the right hand side, we've chosen the fields we want to show on our preview when we're analyzing the duplicates that Demand Tools has found. How does Demand Tools know what we would like to constitute as a duplicate? Well, that's where we go into step two, into matching records and selecting our matching fields. We have three different um, matching fields identified here. At the top, we have Billing Street. So Billing St Street, we have relaxed address match turned on. What that's going to allow us to do is get, for example, um, Demand Tools Avenue versus Demand Tools Street versus Demand Tools Way. It's going to begin to capture those and identify that as a duplicate for us. We have also identified account name. Here we're using the comparison type cleaned account name. There are many of these available. This one's clearly specific to our account name. Cleaned account name can actually be managed within your cleansing rules at the top of the screen here. Cleansing rules allow you to take what are subjective parts of data entry from an end user perhaps, or even the custom themselves on your website and account for them. You can see here, we're replacing the and sign with and. Uh, the plus sign with and, Hewlett Packard with HP, Saint with ST, just pure replace. When it comes to account name, what we often see is prefix and suffix, the department of from a prefix perspective, suffix removal, co, company, corp, corporation, inc, incorporated, all very, very subjective things. If I hear um, validity inc on the phone and my colleague hears validity, Who's right? Who's wrong? Well, the reality is you may well end up with two account objects, uh, uh, records for validity in your Salesforce org. It's worth noting if you're looking at um, an object uh, like, let's say, contact where people and their names are concerned, there is also a nickname list. Um, loads and loads of options here. And you can add new ones as well to capture common nicknames. And then beneath that, we are also utilizing um, cross field match so we are taking two different fields in this case we've got account phone and alternate phone two fields that may well have the same data in them common use case i think we've always been on a sign up form home phone versus mobile phone versus work phone who knows with end users where the actual phone number is going to end up maybe it is a mobile number but actually it's their work mobile number so very 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 um, subjective area of data entry. We can catch that with cross-field matching. And on the right-hand side, we have a selection of options. If we just jump back to that account name example, we have blank value, so matching on blank values. Fuzzy matching is um, a phonetics engine that will essentially catch subjective um, typing errors uh, within individual names. Transposed values uh, is the switching of names. So let's say tools demand instead of demand tools. And alpha clean will remove characters outside of the English alphabet and numbers zero to nine to allow to take away some of those subjective aspects that may cause us to have a duplicate. Now it's time to manage our merge. At the bottom here, we'll go through to the final step. Demand Tools is now going away. It's searching Salesforce and our org here, and it has found just under 8,000 records with the billing city of London that it's going to go ahead and analyze for us. And then it's going to provide us a final step for us to preview our results, take action, merge those records, and clean up our org. So we can see now we have a an Excel style view, if you will, of the data we have requested. Different, uh, different, uh, different duplicate groups on the left hand side, you can see um, from the, uh, the bracket. So we can see we have a, a group at the top here of two records, Data Cloud Backup Limited and Data Cloud Backup LTD. That's what I mentioned earlier on. We can also see we've got a dark field limited group of three records here as well and so on and so forth. So a significant amount of duplicates for us. And we can also see pretty quickly, we have some data standardization issues, right? We've got billing cities uh, not proper cased in some cases, it's fully capital letters, but not in others. 
billing country, we can also see we've got England, United Kingdom, uh, we may even have Great Britain, GB, Scotland and Wales as I would go down in other areas of our data source where we're not searching for London as the billing city, of course. So we need to now essentially decide how to merge our records. We can do this manually, perhaps we as a company preferred limited to LTD and we want that top record to be retained. We can go ahead and manually select that, but that's going to take a while. This is where the concept of winner rules come in. In the top right, you can designate winner rules. This is a scoring system of minus 99 to 99 to allow you to automatically choose the record you would like to retain as your master from your duplicate groups. You can add multiple rules in. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, this works on a scoring system. So if we just jump into one rule here, the MP rule, we can actually then go ahead and manage that from here and see what's behind it and build and add. So we're looking for the record. The oldest record gets 25 points. The record with the most opportunities gets 30 points. However, if the billing city is not populated, minus 10. You can see where I'm going with this. It allows you to really decide in an automated and fair fashion across the board, what is the best record for you and your business to retain? What's the most important pieces of the puzzle for you to have within your retained master? So this is a great way to automate deduplication. We're going to go ahead and apply the most recently modified rule, apply winner rules. You can see that's now going to go ahead and apply that rule across all 7,000 records that have been identified as duplicates. We can now see lots of yellow on the screen. These are our retained masters. We can now see the score in, a, in the third column along as well, and the rule applied being most recently modified. So now we're in a place where we've chosen all of our duplicates. However, there may be more you want to do, more details you want to apply into what you retain as your master. Perhaps you want to retain the most recent phone number, but also the oldest account ID and number, completely fine. We can do that in the top right using field rules. If I turn this on, we've got the EH ideal master record. What this is going to do, if I just jump into it, is once we've decided our master record using the winner rule, we can now choose the individual field we want to pull through. So let's say we have three records, right? Three records in our duplicate group. Actually, the winner has been decided, but there's still some additional information we want to pull through from the two that are going to be lost. In this case, we're choosing for the account number, we want to bring the oldest record. The account source, the same. If alternate phone is, um, is um, empty, please update it. Annual revenue, we want to take the sum of the three accounts and retain that. We want to update the area code if empty. And for our billing information, we want to keep all of the most recently modified because of course, that's the most likely to be correct. You can see lots of options here uh, around most common between the records. You can even do custom scoring, but a great way for you to decide in a really um, en masse fashion, retain the best records for you. So you can go ahead and apply this rule and that will go ahead and enact on your scenario. Now, this has been pretty manual going through it. It's worth noting from the top right, scenarios can be saved. Scenarios can be saved, they will then display on that homepage for you and your other demand tools users within your org. What you're then able to do is automate these jobs to happen in the background. The winner score will be applied, the winner rules will be applied, the field rules will be applied, all in the background to make sure that we are retaining via demand tools the best records for you. So that's a great, great way to address a really common problem. As I mentioned, we've spotted some data quality issues as we've gone through this. So let's go and address them. Let's jump back to the home screen for demand tools. And now we're gonna have a look at Modify, another really heavily used, yet in an automated fashion as well by our users as Modify in its module. If we filter by Modify and once again, use this great search bar to search for my Modify scenario, UK standardization. We can see we're working on the account object, who it's being created by, how often it's been run, and if it's in a schedule, we'll come back to schedule in a minute. So we identified some data quality issues within our London-based accounts. 
the reality is we know if it's a problem in London, it's probably an issue in the rest of the UK. So now we're looking and we've broadened our record selection to billing country equals United Kingdom, UK, England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. You could also include Great Britain and GB if you wanted. Billing country is a free text field in Salesforce. That is an incredibly subjective aspect of, of data entry and causes problems for organizations across the board. We can now see on the right hand side, we've selected a whole bunch of fields, our billing information. We've also brought in our shipping information for this example as well. If you wanna quickly navigate, just use the search bar and it's gonna populate all of the fields here for you to select and bring through. That's step one, very similar. Now into modify step two, we're gonna change some values. A few things we had spotted. One I'd called out was billing street. Here we're going to utilize a formula, one of the many ways you can uh, take an action to replace data. And we've gone with a formula of proper case. You can see a significant amount of functionality and power here already. Lots and lots of functions available across all of your standard and custom fields, whether that's in this case, proper casing our billing street. You can even use international phone fix. What that will do is recognize an account is based in the United Kingdom and essentially go through all of your account phone numbers and standardize them to start with plus four, four. Same goes for any other country to standardize the code. Again, another very subjective aspect of data entry. So formula is a great way, really powerful way to adjust your data and standardize it. We're also going to do an opportunity account, account as well. We can do a record count across our um, objects and records. And then beneath this, two further actions we can take. Billing country, we're going to go for specified value. So in this case, I mentioned earlier, we had all of those different billing countries. We've literally just going to hard code that into United Kingdom. That's what we want our standard to be. And lastly, we also noticed some of our shipping information was not fulfilled. So we're going to utilize a field to field um, adjustment and replacement action. What we're doing here is taking our replacement value from billing city and replacing that into shipping city. So we can go ahead and standardize that data across the board. Many more things you can do here as well. You can do field aggregates if required. Really powerful way to standardize your data. And we can then go into our preview. In this case, we're gonna be looking for a lot more records, right? We're looking for over 34,000 records. Demand Tools is going away to Salesforce, getting that data and going to be modifying it for you to show you on the next screen. A really, really powerful way. It's worth noting, if you're just curious about data quality issues in certain areas of your database, the tune module of Demand Tools is essentially a great way to work with tens, hundreds, and small numbers of records to identify data quality issues and fix them. And then this is a fantastic way to go ahead and standardize it across the board. So we can see now two major columns. We have white columns and green columns. On the left-hand side of the two sets, we will have our billing street. And then we can see we've gone ahead and proper cased our billing street across the board where required, right? Where we have capitalized billing streets, we're going ahead and proper casing this. Opportunity count, in this case, we have no opportunities um, on any of these accounts. So it's not gone ahead and sum those for us. Another great use case there is summing the cases, case count. Um, for, your, for your customers. So you can go ahead and identify potentially those leveraging the highest weight on support organizations for your businesses reporting. We can also see hard coding of the billing country here as well. United Kingdom and England has been altered to our version of proper case to United Kingdom. And then last but not least, we have our shipping city has now been populated with a new value from our billing city. One thing you can notice is because we pulled that from billing, it's not proper cased. We're probably gonna to need to do another run in our standardization to make sure everything is how we want it to be. Again, this scenario can be saved from the top right. We can then publish these changes for each of the records that have had an alteration from the bottom, but let's take the view that we want to do this in an automated fashion. We can jump back to the homepage of Demand Tools. 
Beneath assess on the top right, we can jump into schedule. Schedule allows you to automate your jobs so you can go ahead and manage your data quality in a really scalable way and put the power in your hands to set your organization up for success. So let's go ahead and create a job. Let's call it Elliot's job. And we want to start this job on Monday morning. So Monday, the 8th of November. Let's say we want to repeat this. Let's say weekly in this case, we want to do it every Monday at 8 a.m. So we can go ahead and set our organization up for success every single week. On the right hand side, we then add in our scenarios. First up, we want to dedupe. So let's choose the dedupe module. Let's search for that same scenario, EH City dedupe, and add it into our job. We can then go ahead and add a scenario in for that modify um, uh, kind of scenario we had run through there, standardizing all of that data once it's been cleaned with dedupe, and you can go ahead and act. It's worth noting you can also schedule your data assessment. So you're consistently assessing the quality of your data and the impact of your jobs. Are your jobs going far enough? Are you being stringent enough on your deduplications? Are you modifying enough data to make it actionable? Are there any areas in your database still that need to be addressed? So you can go ahead and add that into your scenario as well and change the order of them. You can go then and head and activate and save your scheduled job to take your data quality management to the next level with the demand tools solution. It's worth noting um, any, anybody can go to the Validity website and get a free 14 day trial of the demand tool solution to see what demand tools can do for you. But most critically, help us help you. Trial users also get a free data quality assessment from the assess module in the top right to help you on your journey to assess the scale of your data quality issues and where those issues may well lie. So we're really providing you guys both the power to play around with the solution a little bit, build the scenarios for your custom objects perhaps, but also get a real sense of what is often a very hard aspect of Salesforce CRM to get a handle on and know the scope of any issues. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope that was interesting. Takes through a little bit of a journey of data chaos and how we've landed at where we are in the modern age, where organizations can actually address these issues and how they can address them with the demand tools solution. Thank you very much for your time.